Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the new Microsoft Planner app inside of Microsoft Teams. So let's get into today's video. Alright, so I have waited a couple of weeks to do this video mostly because I didn't want to sway the, you know, my opinion on this application just because it's a change uh, for me personally I hate when stuff gets changed <laughs> because I like just being used to what I'm using every day and not have to try something new but um, they have updated the previous um, application called Microsoft tasks by planner and to do's inside of Microsoft Teams. Now it is just called Microsoft Planner. That integrates with the Microsoft Planner app outside of Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to share my screen and show you just the main functions of Microsoft Planner um, and how it works and really just the basics of it. And then um, I'll share another video later on that's going more in depth into the things that you can do. All right, so there's three things that you need to pay attention to when first hopping into Microsoft Planner. Again, if you don't see this planner icon to the left side of your Microsoft team, um, just go to this apps icon down here and search for the planner app and you should be able to download it. So once you've installed that and it's on your um, screen here to the left, you click on it and there's three tabs that you can choose from. There's my day, my tasks, and my plans. Okay, my day. Some of you guys might be familiar with this because it is inside of Outlook. You can actually go into My Day inside of your Outlook and add tasks through Outlook. All right, so here's the To Do's app inside of Outlook. Notice that there is a My Day title here. So let's say I'm going to create a YouTube video today. All right, I'm gonna press Enter and notice that it shows up right here almost immediately um, and they are completely and totally synced. That is my day. They've got this cute little banner at the top here that says um, zero out of one task completed for today. So it'll have the list of how many tasks you have done um, and what you still need to do. Then let's go over to the next tab, which is my tasks. This is where you can sort through all of your tasks. This can get very confusing um, because you've got things coming from multiple different locations here. And this is what I mean. You've got tasks coming from your My Day. You've got tasks coming from different channels and teams. You've got tasks coming from emails inside of Outlook. So you've got a couple different locations being pulled to one and this is where you need to pay attention to how you sort these because in my opinion it gets crowded quickly and frustrating. So on the top here you've got a choice to filter these tasks, okay? You can choose between all private tasks assigned to me and flagged emails. Private tasks are ones that you have created for only yourself. Assigned to me tasks are tasks coming from channels or teams. Okay, so these are plans that are separate from your own personal. Then you've got flagged emails. When you flag an email inside of your Outlook, it creates a task for it. So that's where it's gonna go. Let's go back to all. Inside of here, you've also got a way to search right here. So you can search by, you know, keywords, whatever that might be. Maybe it's a plan name. Maybe um, it's some sort of word that's in the title. Um, then you've also got the filters here. When you click down, you can either choose to filter by due date, priority, or progress. Something that I really like is they've added urgent as a priority. Before it only used to be like medium and important, um, but now they have urgent. So you've got a few different ways. Oh, and they have low. Um, so you've got a few different ways now to categorize things. Why is this important? Because you can go over here to the priorities column and click that and you can sort by ascending. So now what it does, it put the 
well, actually what you want to do is probably sort by descending. And what it'll do is it'll put the important ones at the top. So if you're going down the list of what you have to do, the important ones are at the top, the less important ones are at the bottom. I think that's a helpful way to filter it. Then the other filter that you've got is a due date. So let's say if something is due this week, you would click that and it would show everything due. And then it also would show everything late. So you could click here and notice that it will show all the things that I um, had due but I didn't do. Now you can click the clear all button to revert back to normal. <laughs> Okay, something about this is though the progress. So what it just did is it added everything even that I completed ever inside of Microsoft Planner. So if we go back to the progress and click on in progress and not started, now it'll show the things that are actually incomplete um, rather than the ones that are completed. Ooh, be careful with that because if you turn that on, that would really crowd things and be super annoying. All right, let's switch over to my plans. My plans are everything connected inside of Microsoft Planner as well. So when you create a plan inside of a Microsoft Teams channel, or if you create a planner just inside of the Microsoft Planner app itself, um, you can actually view all of that right here. Um, you can choose to show the ones that are shared, the ones that are just personal to you, the pinned ones that you've chosen and the ones from your teams that you are ownership you have ownership of so like for example I have the ownership over the internal training team when I click on that it'll show what the um, plan is or the plans are for that team so this is something that I've actually really enjoyed using because previously I would have to go outside of Microsoft Teams and inside of the Microsoft Planner application itself to actually have a full view of all my plans. But now you can view it all inside of Microsoft Teams without ever leaving. All right, so let me show you how to create a task. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to first go to the place that you wanna create it under. So for example, if it's just a personal task for you that you wanna get done that day, you can go to the My Day tab and click the title button here. This will start to type for you. So let's say I wanted to create one to say edit video about Microsoft Planner. Then what you can do is you can click the enter button and it will create that task for you. Also, just to make sure you're aware, it did create that inside of my Outlook as well, connected to my day. Then you've got a few options um, once you've created that task that you can do. So here is my task right here, edit video about Microsoft Planner. You've got a choice to add it to a specific plan, which this is actually inside of my private uh, task because it's in my day, so I can't change that. But you could if you changed it to um, another board. So then you can also set a due date. So let's say that I wanted to have this done by the 9th of May, okay? Then I can choose the priority. So if you click on the down arrow, you can choose the priority of it, important, medium, or low. So I'm gonna say that that's important. Then you can also say the progress of it. So have you started it? Is it in progress? Have you completed it? Or have you not started it at all? Then another thing you can do is get a quick look of it. So if you click on this little um, icon here, it will open up a you know more detailed description of this task. So you can choose to add this task to a bucket. Um, if you have a bucket system, which these plans, you have to create a whole plan for it and sort it into a bucket. So this doesn't have that. But if you created a plan inside of a channel or just inside of Microsoft Planner, you can choose to create buckets to drop your different tasks in. Then you've got the progress again, the priority again, something pretty cool that they've added is the start date. So let's say that you wanted to wait on this task to start until next week. What I can do is I can click on this and say that I want to start it on Monday. So now it has the start date and when it's due by. And you can also choose if you want to repeat it either daily, on the weekdays, weekly, monthly, yearly, or a custom repeat time. Then if you have any notes that you want to save for yourself in here, you can do that here. You can also add a checklist. Checklists are so helpful and I would highly recommend using it because if you have, let's say, 
a main task like for mine edit video about Microsoft Planner what I have to do is record the video right so you can add that as an item click enter then I have to record my audio then I have to make the thumbnail and then I have to schedule the video to be posted okay so now you see I have zero of four checklists so right now I'm recording the video so if I wanted to click complete on that notice that it has this little bar that says one out of four is complete so it's going to continue to count down until I've completed all of my checklist items and then once I've completed all my checklist items I can complete the task itself this is really helpful if you're trying to keep track of multiple different things inside of one big task at the bottom here you've got attachments you can choose to add an attachment which unfortunately I'm not quite sure why they do this but you can't add an attachment under my day um, I guess that's just they're just assuming that you're gonna use this for really quick and easy tasks you're not gonna need to attach anything to it because I guess you're not gonna be really sharing this with anybody it's just for you personally um, but if you wanted to add an attachment if you go over to my task which is like all of my tasks that I have here let's say I go under this blog that we're going to post click on the eye to pull this up notice how I can choose to add attachments here so now it's not grayed out so when I click on that I can choose to pull from my computer pull from a team's file or um, copy a link um, to a URL and then another cool thing that you can do is add comments so because I have this under a campaign that multiple people have access to other people can go inside this and comment and send the comments to me so I can get notified I seriously love the connection between tasks for a team if you have projects if you're trying to you know stay collaborative with a um, like a project or a team or you know maybe an event even this is going to be a great application for your team to use the other thing that i do want to note is when you're inside of a task like this let's say you wanted to share this task directly with somebody if you click on the three dots here and you click copy link to task when you do that you can choose to paste it and here's what it looks like here so I just pasted that here and it looks like a really long link to something but when you click on it it will actually send that person directly to the task itself I really like that feature because some people are like oh I don't see that what board is it on can you help me and I'm like it's right here and you just send them directly to it so I find that very useful and I would definitely recommend using it for your team next on those three dots up here you also have the choice to move a task so if you want to move it to another team or you can also um, move it to another plan here so like for example if you go and click on under the plan name you can choose between what plan you want to send that to and then also if there's a specific bucket under that plan that you can send it to last thing I want to say is you can also copy this task so if there there's a task that you want to copy exactly or identical somewhere else you can choose to do that and you can also delete it right here all right so let's talk about creating a plan so if you see here at the bottom left you can choose to create a new plan once you click on that you can choose between the templates they have or just start with a list and board that's what I normally do you can title this and you can also choose to add it directly to the pin plans and then you can choose if you want it to be tied to a team right so I'm going to tie this one to the YouTube training team and click create it's gonna take a second and then boom it's gonna populate a plan notice how here you've got the buckets option that I was talking about before so when you're inside a plan that's connected to a team it looks a little bit different um, than just the regular tasks side of things okay so inside a plan so let's let me go back to the YouTube video plan you can choose to create a task from right here and if you click on the task itself it will um, open it up like how I was showing before so let's say create a video so when you click on it it will pull up literally the identical thing that I showed you previously inside of my tasks and then you can also choose to move this over to buckets so let's say in progress you can sort these however you want just use the buckets however you see fit for your team 
So when you're done, let's say like this is in progress, right? I'm gonna move this over to in progress and that is the bucket that it's now under. So this is what I like to call, no, this is what Microsoft Teams calls the board view. But you can also look at the grid view, which is what we were used to back in my tasks in my day. You can choose to look at the schedule view, which shows it in a calendar format. Or you can look at it in the charts view, which will show different, you know, in progress, late, completed. It also talks about the members, so what things are assigned to Kaylee, Bobby, and whoever else is also um, in that board. Now, the way that you can share this out with your team is you can choose to create it and have it all set up and then go to this top right share button and choose to share it with whoever you like. Now, notice that there are three people that actually already have access to this plan. That is Bobby, Jackie, and me. The reason that those people have access to that plan is because I tied it to a team that they are already part of. So if you tie this plan to a team, those people will immediately have access to it. So be aware of that when you are trying to tie it to a group. All right, that is all the information that I'm gonna share with you guys today. That's really the basics on how to use it. Um, my final review, I would say, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Um, I really like that you can see all your plans now inside of Microsoft Teams. Um, I really like the connection between Outlook in Microsoft Teams and Planner, so it literally connects all three pretty seamlessly. Um, the one thing I really don't love is um, how the new grid view is. I don't really like um, the kind of Excel looking format that it has now, but you know, that could just be the change that I'm talking about. And so maybe I'll get used to it and I'll let you know if I like it later down the road. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to comment any questions if you have any questions about Microsoft Planner. I will do my best to respond. Uh, but honestly, I don't know everything. So maybe even some people in this community know more than I do and can share their input as well. So feel free to comment. And also let me know if um, you wanna see more content about Microsoft Planner, just hit that like button so that I know that you wanna see more content like this going forward. Um, and then yeah, and make sure to subscribe so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.